Cool. So, we in the Python, uh, we've done the forward propagation, but not yet the back propagation. Uh, in the slides, we've done the forward and back propagation. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to write the back propagation in Python, but before that we need some theory. And we need some chain rule, because uh, the chain rule is going to let us break really complicated stuff into really easy stuff. So what is the chain rule? So uh, here, right, I can get rid of that one. Uh, chain rule. So I'm not sure mathematically if this is entirely general or not, but in the worst case, it's an easy mnemonic to remember this. So the chain rule is we have some derivative uh, which is challenging to figure out. And we're going to break that into two parts. So the first one has the bit from the top from before. And the second part has the bit from the bottom from before. And we're simply going to add in this extra bit, which I'm going to call C. Now, I'm not sure if mathematically this is like entirely general. It just happens to work in our case for various reasons. But uh, it does seem to work for pretty much anything in our network. So basically, we take this thing, D, uh, partial A, partial B. We don't know how to calculate that. We break it into partial A, partial C, times partial C, partial B. And you can kind of see that these kind of partial Cs kind of like cancel. Now, I don't know if they actually really cancel mathematically, but it makes it easier to remember, right? We just, we have the, the partial A on, on the top, partial B on the bottom, and then we're kind of adding in this partial C. And uh, this makes, uh, the derivatives of a network really easy. And basically, conceptually, this breaks down into something we know and something we can calculate. That didn't work. Um, like this. Does that work? Oh, uh, yeah. Something like that. Uh, text. Yeah, all right. So basically, the partial A, partial B. Well, I mean, we're using this with this rule because we don't know this. Partial A, partial C. Generally, this is something we know for whatever reason. And partial C, partial B is something we can calculate. Right, in practice, for our own purposes, for the back propagation, what do we want? Right, what do we want? We want, we want the partial derivative of the output of the network with respect to the weights, okay? So we want this. We want partial derivative of the output of the network, which is out t, because t is exactly minus 1. It's the output from the last layer, right? With respect to the weights. And, and we're since breaking the weights into like different layers, right? I mean, mathematically. So this is kind of what we want. And let's just put text around that so that it's easy, so that it looks better. So, all right, so we want the partial derivative of the output from the entire network, which is out big T, with respect to the weights from one particular layer. Now, the weights are shared, as we said, uh, but this partial derivative is layer specific. I mean, time step specific. When I'm saying layer here, I'm meaning time step because it's all the same layer, right? Uh, so we want this. We want the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the weights. Now, think about that, that's kind of complicated because we've got this formula being applied at each time step. So if we kind of wrote out that entire formula and tried to create this differential, that would be really complicated. So we're going to chain, chain rule this. All right. So the partial out big T is going to be the partial A here, and the partial WT is going to be the B here. 
uh, and the partial C here is the uh, is the uh, output from the layer. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to do. Uh, let's copy and paste this. Uh, so, the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the weights of one layer is equal to the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the output from one layer. So, this is going to be something that we know, although we don't know it yet, but we will know it. Uh, and uh, here we're going to put the partial derivative of the output from that layer. So we're only looking at one small, tiny layer, not the entire network, uh, with respect to the weights from that layer. OK, and then just let's add in the text bit. All right, so we're breaking this. We've got partial derivative of the output from the network with respect to the weights from one time step breaks into the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the outputs from one layer. Now. We don't know that yet. We're going to do, do some, some chain rule to get that, uh, but we will know this. And we can calculate the partial derivative of the output of one layer with respect to the weights of one layer easily from this formula. All right, this formula tells us the output from times t given the output from t minus 1, the input to time t, and w. All right, and we want the partial derivative of the output of time t, which is this, with respect to the wt, which is this. All right, so to get this bit, we simply need to take the partial derivative of this with respect to w. So that's, that's easy, right? Because it's just the result is just this. Okay, so uh, lazily copying and pasting. That is the derivative. Let's copy and paste this bit. Get rid of this bit. Okay. Right, we're trying to get the partial derivative of the output of one layer with respect to weights of layer, which is this. Together, we take the, the derivative of the output of one layer with respect to the weights. Okay, and this is easy to calculate because it's simply the coefficient of w. Right, we're differentiating with respect to w, so the result is this. Right, I mean, it's kind of like uh, if we have uh, y equal ax, then the differential is, uh, it becomes uh, dy by dx equal a. Okay, and here, the, um, in our case, the y is the output from the layer, the x is the weight. And so we just get rid of the x and the x is the weight, so we're left with the a. So uh, this is like, this would be the y, this is like the x, and this is like the a. So when we differentiate this with respect to uh, w, which is like y, anyway, when we differentiate this with respect to w, we simply get left with this. Get rid of that bit. All right, so we have this bit, and then I'm claiming that we have this bit, but we don't actually have it. We have to calculate it, but we can we can chain rule this again. So let's copy and paste. Right, we're going to chain rule this. So that means we're going to break it into something that we know. 
and something we can calculate. So we've got the partial differential of the output of the entire network with respect to the output from one layer. Right? So that's complicated because like that means in, you'd have to like combine all of these layers all together. But what if we had the grad output from the layer above it? Is that enough information for us to calculate the next grad output? Right? And then we just kind of chain through the network. So that's what we do. So what we're going to do is going to break this into, we're going to break this into the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the output from the next layer, from the next time step. And then the bit that we don't know but we can calculate is the partial derivative of the output. So here we are. So we're breaking it into the partial derivative of the output from the entire network with respect to the output from the next layer. And the partial derivative of the output from, from the next layer with respect to the output from this layer. So this is something that we can calculate mathematically. It's fairly straightforward. In fact, it turns out to be really easy. And this, we're basically going to work our way backwards. So we're going to start from like T. Uh, well, so partial derivative of output big T over partial derivative of output big T is 1. So that's the output from the entire network. And then we're just going to work our way backwards. So in this diagram, we start here. We say, OK, this is like whatever we're feeding in here, which I'm going to use all ones, actually. Uh, but uh, they, they, the, the partial derivatives here are going to come back from your last function. Uh, but here, I'm just going to use all ones. Uh, and then given that, we can calculate this one and then this one, and we just keep stepping through. So at each stage, we know this one, and then we're simply going to multiply with this one to get the next layer down. All right, so what is this d out t plus 1 d out t? So again, we can get that from this formula. So, uh, But we need to rewrite this formula slightly. So this is out t given out t minus 1, and we're simply going to rewrite it uh, we're just going to substitute like t equal t plus 1. So uh, instead of having output t, we're going to have out t plus 1 equal out t. Uh, so this is going to be the input t plus 1. All right. So it's the same formula, but just we've offset times by 1, right? So the output from the next layer is equal to the output from this layer plus the input to the next layer times W. All right. And if we differentiate this, the output of the next layer, with respect to the output of this layer, what do we get? Well, we're simply going to get W. All right. So this. is W. All right. Partial differential of the output from the next layer with respect to the output from this layer is simply this W. All right. So basically, uh, if we're feeding in all ones at the end of the network, which we wouldn't in general, we would feed in whatever comes from our loss. But for simplification, I'm feeding in all ones uh, for this example. Uh, and then each layer going backwards is going to multiply that by W. Cool. So we have enough to do the Python. So let's do the Python. <laughs> 